They hate. They hate. They hate. They hate. They, they hate because they fear. They hate because they fear. Because they fear. Because they fear. And they fear because they feel that the deepest feelings of their lives are being assaulted and outraged. They do not know why. They are powerless pawns. Powerless pawns. They are powerless pawns in, in a, a blind. blind play of social forces. Richard Wright. From Malhouse Productions, A Blind Play of Social Forces, Episode 3, Little Bird. This episode deals with child abuse and contains adult themes and profanity. Listener discretion is advised. For weeks that summer, the rain fell hard, and Eddie, Sam, Marco, and I sometimes retreated to one of the Cold War family bunkers that we had requisitioned. The little room was damp dry and well-stocked with MREs that we'd stolen from other shelters or that I had gotten as rewards from my father, whom everyone called Sir. A feast of dehydrated fruits, soups, potted meats, and sweets with memes like chocolate-flavored cake food and spiced apple dessert. Sir said the apple stuff would give us the squirts. We had also stocked our underground fort with ropes, blankets, comics, a radio, two flare guns, and old Halloween candy from the commissary. I had labeled and categorized everything on the concrete shelves of the family pantry. The boys said it was because I'm a girl, but that's not why. A A soldier soldier needs needs to to have have order, order, says Sir. I had been trying to teach Eddie how to play chess, but Marco and Sam were more interested in Miss October and how she looked like a Spanish teacher we'd had the previous year in sixth grade. Look at her nose. It's the same nose. Man, I wish I had a picture. Her tits are way too big. That's just the magazine. I swear this is Miss Sutcliffe. Hey, Eddie, you think this is Miss Sutcliffe from science last year? I crossed my arms over my own small breasts. You know... You guys could learn something if your minds weren't littered with filth. A soldier keeps his mind and body clean Clean and and focused. focused. You're just jealous because your tits are smaller than Eddie's. Eddie looked at me and crossed his arms. Prove it. That's when it began. Prove it. This was always my challenge from Sir, so I made it my challenge to them. Maybe that's why they ended up following me everywhere. I wouldn't let the boys get by with boasts or accusations of unworthiness. That's what Sir called them. If they said they could spit across the road, I said prove it. If one of them said he could jump out of a tree and land on his feet, I made him prove it. Sam had ended up with a twisted ankle that way. If they said they could beat any girl in arm wrestling, prove it. After I beat all three of them in arm wrestling, one after the other even... I tell Sir. He says he's proud of me, but when I say... It was easy. They're all wimps. He puts me on KP duty. You can't prove your strength if you're fighting cowards. I didn't think this time was any different until Marco asked... What? You gonna show us your tits? I wished I hadn't said what I had said. I couldn't take it back, but I didn't know what would disappoint Sir more. I thought about what he would say. Maybe that our bodies are just things, or maybe a soldier always finishes what he starts. Sir taught me to answer with a question and make their answer your tool. So that's what I did. What are you going to do? Show us your things? They talked quietly, asking one another if they were brave enough to pull down their pants in front of each other, let alone me. Sam shrugged his shoulders. 
Then Eddie asked, Wait, do I have to take off my shirt? I hadn't seen Eddie with his shirt off, even though it clung to his body like a lumpy sausage when he got out of the pool. Eddie had very little discipline, but he was obedient. Loyalty makes a soldier's strength your strength. We have to show her our dicks, fat ass. Eddie's never even seen his own dick, said Sam, who had Jordan Mid's privates on every notebook he owned. Shut up and leave Eddie alone. It'll be okay, Eddie. I wanted to tell him what Sir would say, but he wouldn't understand. It'll just be for a second. You can do anything for one second, and if you can do it for one, you can do it for two and three. Like holding out telephone books or putting your feet in ice water. They're called stress positions. Sir hands me the photos from his collection one by one. They can hold still sometimes for hours. He says of the hairy men with bags on their heads. It's the one thing he admires about them. A second isn't long enough to compare. We need at least a minute. Thirty seconds. Eddie's timing. That was always his duty. I was the captain like Sir. Sam was the sergeant major like his dad. Marco the sergeant like his dad, who wasn't even American. Eddie didn't have a rank. His dad was a warrant officer, and the boys didn't consider that part of the army. Eddie didn't seem to mind. Eddie was weak. I laid out the rules. The boys had to have rules. They'd have to stand against the far wall behind one of the low bunks. Eddie and I will take off our shirts with our backs to you and turn around at the same time. You'll have 30 seconds to get a good look to see whose breasts are bigger. And then Eddie and I get to judge which one of your little pricks is the biggest. I had heard that word in the commissary, but that was the first time I had ever said it aloud. I dare not curse in front of Sir. Profanity is a language of the weak. So you don't take off. We better tie you to the bunk. You're not tying me anywhere. Yeah, no way. I could have ended it there, and I almost did. But when I started moving towards the ladder, Marco said, You better untie us after. I knew what he wanted, and he was willing to shame himself to get it. Want is weakness. When you know what your enemy wants, you can use that to your advantage. Put your hands behind your backs, palms together like you're praying, only backward. I showed Eddie how to use the duct tape to bind Marco's wrists and hands. You have to tape high enough so he can't slip his hands under his butt. Sir points out a man tied to a cot. It's called the rainbow position, because her body's been backwards like a rainbow. It hurts. If you want, you can go back to looking at your stupid magazine. He could have just said okay, but he shut up. Eddie bound Sam's wrists, probably not as tightly as he was supposed to, and then took care of their ankles. Then I ran a rope through the springs of the bunk to tie their wrists to their ankles. It wasn't the rainbow position, but close. You'll be fine, as long as you don't try to get up. If they had tried to get up, they would have fallen face first onto the ground. I moved the two folding chairs out of the way so they wouldn't cut their faces. You must avoid cuts and abrasions. Leave no mark. For all we have to go through, we should get to see you longer. How about 20 seconds? Shut up. I had to focus on a spot on the wall to calm down. Get your watch ready. You can't look at me. Just your watch. Get on with it. A sergeant ordering a captain. Sir told me that I shouldn't fraternize with him because Marco's dad wasn't even from here. I pulled my shirt off first, tensed my muscles to stop the shivering. When I looked around, Sam and Marco were smiling, even though they were tied up. My mouth felt sticky. I almost put my shirt back on and went up the ladder, but instead, I counted breaths. One, two, Get on with it already. I looked over at Eddie and nodded to let him know it was okay. He struggled to get his shirt over his head. I wanted to help him, but I was embarrassed. I, I was embarrassed for him, not me. Eddie was tattooed with stretch marks. 
long red whelps that ran across his sides and back. He looked like he had been whipped, like the men in Sir's pictures. I unhooked my bra. I nudged Eddie, and we both turned around. Eddie began to move his hands up to guard himself from view, but I reached over and took one of his hands in mine to comfort him. I knew what Sir would say, but I did it anyway. We stood in solidarity, ready for inspection. The beep of Eddie's watch told the judges the competition had begun. As they stared at my body, I reminded myself that I was in charge. In combat, a soldier has to always be in command of his body and mind. He decides whether the enemy can hit him. He must be aware of his surroundings at all times. He can't be distracted by his emotions. No empathy. The enemy cannot get inside his head. His body is not his mind, but his mind controls his body. Sir shows me pictures of the Shaolin monks balancing on mountain peaks, bent backwards like bridges over streams. I like these pictures more than the other ones. I had just controlled my shaking when Eddie called. Time! He immediately turned and began retrieving his shirt from the floor. When he bent over, his belly bunched up. I picked up my shirt and bra but did not put them back on. Instead, I flung them over my shoulder and took a couple of steps to stand in front of my judges. Confidence conquers cowardice. So, what's the call? I leaned in so my breasts were nearly touching Marco's brown face. A face so much like ones Sir had shown me. Sir keeps the photos in a stack on the table and deals them like old maid cards. The men are skinny. The ones without bags on their heads look scared. A Muslim is afraid of nudity. Remove his clothes and he'll feel shame. You can control them with the shame, but one must not be ashamed of one's body. I could tell they were waiting for me to cover myself up, to put them out of their misery, but I didn't. I crossed my arms under my breasts so they plumped up. Then I whispered something to Marco that made him cough and wriggle. The men cannot cover themselves because they are holding buckets of water. A Muslim is especially ashamed of his genitals. He keeps them hidden because he cannot control them. You can take a picture of his genitals and show them to other Muslims, and you can break him. Your turn. I let my clothes slip off my shoulder. Then I bent down and yanked Marco's pants down to his ankles. The shaking was returning, so I steadied my breath. Marco's underpants did nothing to hide his excitement. I told Eddie to do the honors. He hesitated, but followed orders. Sir shows me a picture of a woman holding a leash. At the end of the leash is a man lying on the ground. He is very hairy. What do you think? The man... Looks like an animal. Exactly. You can't think of them as people. They aren't like us. If they were... What are you doing? He asked, trying to lean away from me. Stand down, Sergeant Major. An officer does not tolerate dissension in the ranks. Cut us loose. As As long long as the the mind mind is strong, strong, the the body body cannot be weak. Focus is the key. That is a look of humiliation. He lines the pictures up. The ones of the men in a line like elephants. The ones with their arms spread out. The ones of their faces being pressed together. If you humiliate a man, you show him who he really is. A man is only as strong as his weakest moment. One thing they can't stand is homosexuality. It is an unforgivable offense. Kiss. Fuck you. Eddie started for the ladder, but I put my hand out to stop him. He obeyed. Let us go! Anger leads to rage. Rage can make you think you're in control. 
You must remain calm and know that you are in control. Sir would say Marco needed a lesson in fear. I walked over to the concrete pantry and pulled down a flare gun. This, this is, is called a very. very. Well, not designed to function as a weapon. The same model was used to take down a German airplane during World War I. Fired at this range, it will burrow into your body and light you on fire from the inside out. I aimed the flare gun at Marco's penis and it flopped over as if on command, releasing a stream of pee. Fear had returned. Fear is weakness. I reminded him of his order. Kiss the Sergeant Major. Most people don't know this, but strength lies not in disobeying, but in taking command of the order. If ordered to do something that you don't want to do, show your strength with proud obedience. In one of the photos in Sir's collection, they form a pyramid like cheerleaders. Sir says they are weak. He says he can see it in their sloppy formation. These men have their heads covered. It doesn't look like a pyramid, though. Just a pile. The man behind them, a good guy, Sir says, is giving a thumbs up and smiling. Why is he smiling? Wouldn't you be? I let myself focus too long on that image and Eddie took the pistol. He cut them loose and gave the gun to Marco. I just stood there as they put their pants on. Crazy bitch. He and Sam climbed up the ladder. I could tell that he was looking at me. Then he was gone. He followed them, despite what they had done to him. How could he be so obedient to those who treated him that way? Alone in the shelter, I listened to the rain. A unit was running drills nearby. Their call and response was comforting. It was the one about the little bird on the windowsill. The chessboard was still sitting out, so I returned it to its box and put it back on the shelf. When I did, the rest of the supplies looked out of place. One shelf at a time, I removed everything and put it back. I pulled the other flare gun out of the box. It seemed lighter. I held it out and gripped it, firm but not too tight. A man cannot take anything from you that you do not give to him willingly, soldier. When I reached the top of the ladder, I saw Boots. The boys stood with their fathers. Eddie was absent. Sir stood as he does for inspection, and I checked to make sure my shirt was tucked in. She made us take our pants off, Dad. And tied us to the bed thing. She pointed a gun at me. Sir repeated it. I had made them take their pants off. I had tied them to the cots. I had pointed a gun at them. Nothing about me and Eddie. Nothing about Eddie at all. What about it, soldier? I remain silent. Silence is the best weapon a captured soldier can wield. Sir called the sergeant and the sergeant major over. They spoke in whispers. They're just kids. Sam and Marco kept their heads down, but I didn't want to look at them anyway. That guard, the woman, is in another picture where she is pointing at the naked men and giving a thumbs up. Sir sees me looking away. You need to be brave. Why? Because if they had their way, this would be you in these photos. Sir dismissed his men, and Sam and Marco followed their fathers. It's over. I knew he meant more than just what had happened. You're not permitted to engage with these boys anymore. He took me to get ice cream. Eddie and I are sitting at the kitchen table eating popsicles, and I am showing him Sir's pictures. It's disgusting. I know. They have no self-respect. 
Sir comes home and scoops up all the pictures back into the box. They're not for kids to look at. I don't say anything. When Eddie leaves, Sir asks me. Why hang around with a loser like him? Eddie's a good guy. Loyal. Sir's word. He's no soldier. Not like you. Eddie wasn't a soldier. And he wasn't like me. Little Bird stars Lily Sanders as the narrator, Kai McAlvin as Soldier, Tim Knudsen as Sir, Ryan Goffman as Sam, Eddie Philpot as Eddie, and Marco Marks as Marco. Shermarky Purcell is the voice of the epigraph. Trevor Tremaine composed our theme music. Cover art by Geneva Hicks. Sound effects courtesy of Pixabay. Special thanks to Annie Weaver, Shenandoah Evans, and Travis McGuire. If you aren't already, follow or subscribe. You'll not only get a new episode each week, you'll hear bonus episodes like my upcoming discussion with Lily Sanders. To find out more about our cast, to read the original short story, or donate to the show so we can make an unforgettable second season, Visit us at A Blind Play Podcast or on Instagram at Mauhaus Productions. Hi, this is Michael Mao. Uh, you probably already knew that. Each week, I want to direct you to other great podcasts. And this week, I'm absolutely loving this stream of great podcasts from Pinball Productions. Funny, filthy, and full of heart. These narrative podcasts from producer Adam Zope will leave you wanting more, I swear. Check out The Greater Good, The One, Become, and the latest, Nobodies, which features yours truly as a narcissistic, hypocritical Christian baseball player with seven kids, a no-cursing policy, and a nose full of cocaine. If you like my recommendation, drop us a Venmo tip at a Blind Play Podcast. Thank you for listening. Ah! If you aren't already, please follow the show. Your podcast app should have a follow button. Click it. And please rate and review. Ratings and reviews are the lifeblood of podcasts, and they take so little time. Just click those five stars. Tell us about your favorite episode. Share with friends and family. And thank you for listening.